So today I'm going to talk about the atmospheric sounding or the skew T chart. So as a forecaster it is really the most used tool that we have. It gives us a snapshot of what's going on in the atmosphere and if you understand the general situation and where the MSs are coming from this lets you have a, a lot closer look at what's going on. So every day BOM releases weather balloons and you can find them on the aviation section under aerological diagrams. If you click this it'll take you to a document which explains it in detail but I'll try and go over the basics. So this is the temperature trace also known as an atmospheric sounding or a skew T. So on the horizontal axis we've got the temperature but you can see that it goes off on a, this angle that's why it's called a skew T because the temperature is skewed. On the vertical axis we've got pressure, 1000 hectopascals at the surface, reducing as you get higher because there's less air pushing down on top of you. The ICAO heights are an approximation for height that aviators use because they measure the pressure to get their altitude. But it's going to be slightly wrong because different temperatures will produce different densities of air which results in different pressures at different altitudes. But chart goes up to 15 kilometers or 50,000 feet and we can see that um, for me the most important part of the atmosphere today is up to 7,000 feet this is where the clouds are forming and where we'd be flying so the red lines are the most recent balloon launch and the blue lines are the previous launch so you can see how it's evolving over time the red launch was after sunrise and the line on the right is the temperature as we go up in the atmosphere so the balloon measured these temperatures it also measured this these wind speeds so we've got five knots southerly on the surface 10 knots southwesterly 15 knots westerly at about 7,000 feet so it doesn't show the previous winds of the previous balloon but it does show the previous temperatures so here we've got the temperature at the ground at about 24 degrees and it reduces at 10 degrees celsius per kilometre of altitude in dry air when you have thermals. So this air is hot at the bottom, cool at the top, just what you want for thermals. The line on the left is the dew point. So that's how much moisture the air can hold. Here the dew point is about 12 degrees, which means if you cool the air to 12 degrees, it becomes 100% humid and above that you can expect cloud to form. So the, the air mass as it rises up, is staying at 12 degrees so that's one clue that tells you that this air is well mixed because it'll get to 12 degrees celsius and then it will be 100 percent humidity so relative humidity is 100 percent in the cloud base it's something like maybe 50 percent down here this air in here can hold moisture until it gets to 12 degrees after that clouds will form so that's what happens when these lines are touching we've got 100 percent relative humidity and there's a good chance that we'll see cloud doesn't necessarily mean it's overcast but anywhere the air is rising it'll be releasing moisture because it's cooling down and you'll get cloud and in the gaps where it's sinking down the moisture is being absorbed back into the air but it's 100% humid. So if we look at the blue lines here we can see there's not a lot of difference above this height that they're pretty much following the same curves okay so the upper atmosphere isn't changing much in the last six hours so here it's quite dry so blue skies above above these clouds and here the temperature increases now when temperature normally temperature decreases you can see all the temperature lines are going to the right because otherwise the chart would be off to the off the page so normally the temperature is going down to this point here where the temperature is if you look at up here it's minus 40 minus 45 this point here is the top of the troposphere, it's called the tropopause, and above that is the stratosphere. And the reason it gets warmer in the stratosphere, or at least stays the same temperature, is because the stratosphere is being heated when UV rays make ozone. So that's what makes this big inversion, which stops thunderstorms going right out into space. So that's pretty important. But there's another little inversion here, which means you know, so the temperature is increasing again, and we've got warmer and drier air on top 
This is actually really good for paragliding because it means this inversion will stop the storms unless it gets really hot and that will mean that we can fly with nice clouds without worrying about it raining. The thing I was going to say, when the temperature is cooling in a thermal, it's um, because the air is expanding out because there's less pressure on it, less air pushing down it from above, that means that all the heat's spreading out as well. So any time it's rising in a thermal, it's cooling at 10 degrees Celsius per kilometre of altitude. When you get to cloud, the heat release from latent heat in the cloud is actually warming the air, so that offsets the cooling a little bit, so it means you only have about 6.5 degrees cooling per kilometre. So that 6.5 degrees cooling lines up with these little dotted green lines. That's the saturated adiabatic elapsed rate. So 6.5 degrees equals saturated adiabatic elapsed rate, which is drawn with these lines. So if it's parallel to these lines, there's a few of them, then you're cooling at that rate. If it's parallel to these dotted lines, that's the dry adiabatic elapsed rate. That's what I told you before. That's 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So here we can see it's cooling at the dry adiabatic elapsed rate, and then it's saturated, the air is forming clouds, and it's cooling at the saturated adiabatic elapsed rate. So up until this point here, at 7,000 feet, the air is well mixed. So this is the boundary layer. It's the layer of air that is unstable and it's close to the Earth's surface. Above that, it's dry, but it's still cooling at that same saturated adiabatic elapsed rate. So any air that goes up here is going to cool along these lines, the 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So if air was forced to go from here upwards, it would follow along this temperature line. So the temperature is going to get colder as it goes higher, and that's going to mean it's much colder than the environment, so it's going to fall back down. So that's why it's stable, because if you push it up, it wants to go back down, and if you push it down, it wants to go back up. It's just like pushing someone on a swing. They'll always go back to where they started off, and that's what forms waves in the atmosphere. So a weather sounding is a really good tool, but it gives you so much detail, you've got to think it's a precise snapshot of one point in space at one point in time. So the MS could change. There might be a sea breeze coming in, there might be a front. So normally you can travel hundreds of kilometres without the sounding changing by that much. But obviously if you went from one side of this front to the other, there'd be a pretty significant change. And also, you know, as the sea breeze comes in in the afternoon, that's going to bring in cooler, moister air underneath, so that's going to change things a lot. But here we can see that a low pressure system is well out of the way, and it's bringing in moisture across the oceans to the eastern part of Australia, but also in the upper atmosphere it's bringing drier air, so that's what we've been seeing. And we'll check the forecast, but we can expect that the MS won't change too much today. So here's some time lapse from a few months ago. You can see that there's different layers of clouds. So the clouds that are in the top of the boundary layer where we're thermaling are coming from a different direction and the wind above is different. And then, you know, if you've got different layers of air and they're not really mixing with each other, you can understand that the winds would be different. If they start to mix, then the winds are gonna to start to mix as well. So waves are really common. In fact, they're kind of normal in the upper atmosphere because it's stable up there. And from time to time, there's, you know, little bumps like a cumulus cloud pushing up or a mountain range that cause some kind of perturbation so the air up there bounces up and down and if there happens to be enough moisture you can see those waves in these lenticular clouds up the top there so the wind is moving from right to left but the clouds aren't moving so much with the wind here you can see fog so that's a cooler damper layer underneath a warmer drier layer above you can definitely see some waves there as uh, there's you know some interactions um, with things pushing up and down against that stable air mass that's sitting above the fog. If you want to look at some historic soundings, you can go to this website, Wyoming Soundings. The university there has historic soundings, so you've just got to figure out the number. That's written on the sounding, like for the Brisbane sounding we looked at before, where you can try and find it on this map, and then just make sure it's a GIF, GIF uh, skew T, and select the date. That's pretty cool, that website. And if you want to look at forecast soundings, Windy has got it. It's amazing. They didn't always have it, but they have added it. And it really is a good way to see what to expect out of the day. So you look at how high the uh, thermal layer is going to be, um, how stable it is above, uh, how much cloud, if there's any cloud in the upper atmosphere, and uh, what winds you're going to get. 
Uh, although you might want to look more closely at the winds in, in another place because that's just one point. And uh, yeah, what kind of uh, cloud depth? It doesn't look like there might be a bit of cloud there. That's a little way inland. If we go closer to the coast, you can see there's a lot more moisture there. So yeah, the forecasts are really giving you a lot of information if you know what to look for with soundings. So when you get good at interpreting soundings, you can look at the graph and imagine a sky like this. Another thing that you can do once you get really familiar with weather is look at the satellite picture and try and imagine what the sounding is like at different points.